recently I've done a video where I was mixing my own greens and I featured a number of great books uh, to refer to for color mixing. This was one of the colors and I realized afterwards that actually somehow I didn't do a uh, review for this book. So. Um, since I have also purchased this book, so I thought it might be a good idea just to combine them in kind of in one book review. I'll start with the first one. So um, the, the format is kind of nice and tall, but narrow. It's um, a wire bound book, but the wire is hidden in the binding which I personally quite like because that means I can get all the pages to lay completely flat. Um, you wouldn't be able to push the pages completely back because it's hard um, cover and the binding is um, as well. So it's nicely and sturdy and well made. Uh, so I think it would survive uh, quite well being thrown in the luggage or whatever if you're traveling and you want to take a book with you to read on the airplane or something like that. So um, this particular book focuses on color mixing recipes for portraits. Um, I find wherever there is portraits, color palette, a landscape is not too far off except for the greens. Um, but everything else you will find kind of a repetition of the portraits and landscape, a lot of the golden colors uh, and things like that. This book focuses on three mediums, oil, acrylic and watercolor. So these recipes can be translated into those three color groups and we'll have a look inside in a minute. So this is the cover. Let me just put this one somewhere else. Uh, this is the cover and it says here more than 500 color combinations for skin, eyes, lips and hair. It is by William Powell as is the book that we will look at after this one. Um, I think there is a little series and there are a couple more books available so you can check those out. This is the back of the book and it kind of gives you a, a quick indication of uh, how the book works. Step one, step two, step three. There is the uh, color mixing recipes up here and it also includes a plastic color mixing grid. So I think this is probably best for kind of beginners to get used to the ratio, uh, but probably also quite good for seasoned artists as well. I haven't used it before uh, but it seems quite quite useful so it's transparent and I guess you can easily wipe it so there are six colors and all the parts of the colors on both sides so you can refer to it and to mix the exact quantity here is the author himself William Powell so on the inside of the cover, you'll find a list of colors for oil and acrylic paints. Um, usually oil and acrylics double uh, with the exception for a couple of colors. For instance, here, uh, chrome oxide green would be the oil equivalent and then chromium oxide green um, in acrylic. So it's chrome and chromium and... Um, other than that, we have pretty much sort of similar thing with phthalo, red rose, um, can be substituted with quinacridone red, um, and yeah, so fairly identical, but when it comes to watercolor, um, we have their own colors, and obviously these colors are needed for the eye, skin and lip and hair color in mind and those are the colors recommended in watercolor for the same. Um, so let's look if we have a contents um, list here. So this are the contents. You can pause and have a quick look but quickly there is a skin tone palette, color theory, mouth color tones, ear nose color tones, oil and acrylic skin tone recipes, color tones, watercolor skin tone recipes, creating color index and oil 
acrylic conversion chart. So then here we can see from, from the contents that watercolor and oil and acrylics are separated. So um, I find it's kind of well designed this book, easy to use, easy to navigate, everything is clear and I find that all the colors you need are easily accessible and the color theory is also quite useful and it explains what needs to be done. Um, and then we have here the facial planes and color theory. So this is the mouth color tones and then Ian nose color tones. So it explains to you the shadows and the highlights, um, etc. And then we have the skin tone recipes. So the skin tones go from, from light to middle and dark. It explains to you what you need to do uh, or what color you need to use to create a highlight value, warm shadow, cool shadow and gray in color. So those are the colors you need to use. And then the recipe is underneath. Um, it also says here color used, so these are the col colors that have been used, and master skin tone recipe. So, um, so here we have in this particular recipe we have uh, six master recipes. So this color that has been created, you refer to it up here. So one rose sienna, one alizarin crimson, and one white. So that basically you need six of those, and then you need three white and to recipe number 13. So let's look where recipe number 13 is. Um, that would be here, so cool shadow. So yeah, it gives you basically a good variety of things. And with every color, there is a, uh, a way of graying things. So you can see it changes which is also quite useful. And now here we're diving into darker skin tones. And I think it has a good variety from uh, more red tones to grayer tones and to very, very rich tones. So you get pretty much every skin color imaginable. I think it has a fantastic um, range of colors. So then we have color tones for the eyes. It tells you uh, what sort of colors to use for certain color eyes. And this is obviously very, you know, minimal, but within every color group of the eye, there are many, many colors. And so you can see and break this down. Um, so although it may appear that we only have a few color eyes, uh, and, you know, in actual fact, obviously, these are the main color groups for the eyes, but obviously there is so many different shades of green, so many different shades of blue and uh, gray. So my um, eye color is gray and, you know, I, I know so many different gray colors here as well. So you can still uh, play within the recipes and create even more. Hair now it's probably quite difficult to to create <laughs> all colors of hair, but I think this is a good starting point. Uh, again, quite sort of uh, basic hair colors to get you started, and I think once you start mixing a few colors, you'll probably get the gist of it and can go off and do your own mixes. So um, that's all of that. Now here is the the watercolor. Um, skin tone recipes and so we have a few pages similarly using uh, different colors for graying value so quite a few pages and, and then we, here, we have here conversion charts so for instance uh, we have oil color name acrylic color name all right, so that's it, and then the color mixing grid. So that's that for this book. And then I was quite curious in uh, 
kind of experimenting a little bit more with mixing greens. And when I ordered this book, um, I didn't sort of immediately realize that this is purely for oil paints. I don't think it says here on the on the cover. So color mixing recipes for landscapes, mixing recipes for more than 500 color combinations, again by William Powell, and includes color mixing grid. So I, was, I assume the same thing as we saw. So nothing on the cover says that. So I kind of, I guess, automatically assumed that it would also be covering three different mediums, but in actual fact, uh, it's more of a oil um, painting or oil paint orientated book, but you do have um, acrylic color names here next to it as well. So same thing goes for uh, using certain colors to, to work with green. So that's quite useful if you just wanted to focus on that. And uh, do your own mixes as well, just uh, knowing which colors are must-haves for creating your own greens. Fairly similar to the book before, we have the uh, contents and obviously this is now focusing on the landscape. So we have um, skies and clouds, trees and mountains, and then we have color recipes and color guidance index. And also a list of things that you can use these color recipes for, including sea, sand, clays, rocks, mountains, uh, soil, snow, warm light, sunlit, shadows, um, trees, flowers, etc. Okay, so here we go. Observing color in, in nature, using recipes to paint mountains, and here are landscape color recipes. So as you can see quite bright. So you do have some lovely varieties. In fact we just um, came from Wales and there was um, a time we were sort of um, hiking and saw in the far distance this lovely field of I think it was actually a rapeseed field and it was quite far and the way the sun was setting it made it look this lovely glowing super super vibrant green gold which i thought i've never seen in nature but it just goes to show that there are some colors that are quite intense and vibrant and you think wait well, actually i haven't seen color like that the like the brightest pinks even opera pink in some cases there is this sprinkling of that color in nature so um, yeah, goes through. It doesn't mean when when you are painting landscapes that it's all going to be kind of like these sort of muddy, um, dull colors. It can be vibrant, and as you can see, going from vibrant to moody to even pastels. So I find that this book covers a wide range of colors, um, but mostly these are. Um, well, they are oil paints, which I guess you can translate this into acrylic paints. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's meant to be more for the oil paints. I'm just going to give you a little flip through here. And then uh, you have a color guidance index. So if you wanted to find a certain color, for instance, you could do that and then same thing at the end of the book you have the color mixing grid and it's exactly the same here mine is for some reason really scratched up <laughs> the other one is like brand new but this this particular one anyway so that's it i hope you found it somewhat useful and yeah i will try to link the other books that are great for color mixing if you haven't seen that video actually um, in the beginning of it i sort of list all the other books that are um, quite good for that so thank you for watching and i will see you soon